Hello friends, welcome to a new podcast on Defining Verse. We've been through a couple of them, and since London season is there, I started also a new podcast, because I think it's important that we go through that season together. So, but anyway, this is your pastor, Yeti, and I welcome you to another podcast of the Divine Verse through the characters of the Bible. And today I'm going to talk about Abel. By faith he was commended as a righteous man. Hebrew 11 verse 4. The most important thing in life isn't what we think about ourselves or what others think about us, but what God thinks about us. He is the final judge. When he examines and evaluates our motives, words and actions are we commended as was able or are we condemned as was his brother Cain the Lord does not look at the things man looks at God told the prophet Samuel man looks out looks at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart first Samuel 16 verse 7 from a human point of view both brothers were good sons hard workers and openly religious I think it's a kind of risky to use that word. But from the divine perspective, Cain's heart belonged to the devil, while Abel's heart belonged to the Lord. Because of Abel's faith, and I think more to use this in relationship as they were together in the Garden of Eden, a relationship living with God I think is a better word than putting religious because of Abel's faith God commanded him as a righteous man if we want God's approval we need that kind of righteousness but what kind of righteousness is it By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man. When God spoke well of his offerings, faith is only as good as the object, and the object of Abel's faith was the Lord God. Adam and Eve had learned that they couldn't cover their sins through their own efforts of sewing together leafy garments. When God clothed them in animal skins, he taught them that the way of forgiveness is through the shedding of innocent blood. Genesis 3, 7 and 21. Abel learned this important lesson from his parents and followed their example by trusting what the Lord said. He was saved by faith and clothed in God's own righteousness. The fundamental truth 
that God's righteousness is received by faith is founded throughout Scripture because this is the only way God can save sinners. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Genesis 15 verse 6 Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered, sang David after months of disobedience and deception. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Psalm 32, 1-2 two. The Apostle Paul quoted Genesis 15, verse 6, and Palm Psalm 32, verse 1 and 2, in the fourth chapter of his epistle to the Romans to help explain the marvelous doctrine of justification by faith. Being once for all declared righteous through faith in Jesus Christ, the prophet Habakkuk condensed all of this to seven words. The righteous will live by his faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, a verse that is quoted in Romans chapter 1 17, Galatians 3 verse 11, and Hebrews 10, the verses 37 to 38. God honored Abel's faith because Abel brought the right sacrifice. Paul made that clear in Romans 5 verse 9. Since we have now been justified by Christ, by Christ's blood, justification isn't simply some kind of commercial transaction whereby God winks at our sins and wipes the record clean. God warned our first parents that they would die if they disobeyed him. So justification is a matter of life and death. Jesus bore our sins when he died for us on the cross. And when we trust him, we receive his righteousness put on our account. Justification is costly. False righteousness, such as Cain's cloaks, is sin in the garment of religious activities. The pretender can go to the altar, offer a sacrifice to God, and then walk away and murder his own brother. But the true believer leaves the gift at the altar and seeks reconciliation. Matthew 5, 23-24 That's a good teaching going through the Lent season, because I think there is a huge problem in righteous reconciliation. The sign of peace is a symbol of that, but it doesn't mean that we make it right and just go back to our own chairs or back home and leave it as, as it is. Here is a very clear understanding what we have to do. And Cain probably was the kind of person like that. He offered but it was not with his full love, his true love for God. He just did this thing, left it there, and went back to the fields. Because of his faith, Abel had experienced a change of heart and life that resulted in good character and good works. With Cain, deception reigned through hypocrisy, but for Abel, grace reigned through righteousness. Roman 5, 21. Why did Cain murder his brother? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. 1 John 3, verse 12. 
We don't know how God revealed his acceptance of Abel's sacrifice. Perhaps fire came from heaven or God spoke to him audibly. By using the plural offerings, Hebrew 11.4 may suggest that this divine approval was given each time Abel came to the altar. And perhaps each time Cain noticed it, he became angrier and more resentful. What a tragedy to come to worship God and then go away filled with thoughts of murder. And that is not only what happened first in the Garden of Eden. We don't have to look far. It happens in our daily lives. We don't have to go far. We turn on the TV and there it is. Jealousy, anger, not contentment, obsession, wrong desires, can all come and ending up with killing somebody. I'm not negative, I'm just re facing the reality of our lives. So, why did Cain murder his brother? God knows. But for us, here is a lesson. Had you questioned Cain, you probably would have discovered that his theology, I think in those days, we didn't use the word theology, was fairly sound. He believed in God and believed that God had created all things. He believed that God wanted to receive worship and thanksgiving. He believed that he and his brother were supposed to work and carry their share of the family burdens. But the demons believed in one God and they aren't saved. And when they think about God, they tremble. Something Cain didn't do. That's why James added, As a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. James 2.26 That faith is deceptive faith, but it doesn't fool God. Through saving, faith makes the believer into a new creation with a new master, new motives, new priorities, and new desires to love God and one's neighbor. Jesus called Abel righteous Abel, Matthew 23, 35. And John said that Abel's actions were righteous, so in both characters and conducts, he proved to be a righteous man. The righteousness of God was seen not only in Cable's life and worship, but also in his death. Abel was slain because he faithfully worshipped and served the Lord, and the crime was committed by a member of his own household. Matthew 10, 36 Allow yourself, if of course it's possible, to write these scriptures down. It was obvious to Cain, the firstborn, that God had bypassed him and chosen his younger brother to carry on the messianic promise, an act the Lord frequently did in Jewish history. God rejected Ismael, Abraham's firstborn, and Jewish Isaac. Genesis 17, 17 to 20. And then he bypassed Esau, Esau firstborn, in favor of Jacob. Jacob replaced Reuben, his firstborn son by Leah, for Joseph, his firstborn son by his beloved Rachel or Rachel. Genesis 49, 1 to 4. 
Jacob had already adopted Joseph's two sons as his own, making Ephraim the younger grandson, the firstborn instead of Manasseh, the elder's grandson. Genesis 48:15-20. The message of these changes is clear. God rejects our first birth, and therefore we need a second birth, a new birth from above. John 3, verses 3 to 7. If we are to enjoy God's blessing in His sovereign grace, God chooses the least and gives them the most. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 31. Cain tried to conceal his terrible sin, but his brother's blood cried out to the Lord from the ground bearing witness that Cain had murdered him, Genesis 4, 9 to 12. The English word martyr comes from the Greek word that means witness. For a martyr is one who bears witness by giving his life for the Lord. Abel was a martyr witness for the Lord, the first martyr recorded in the Bible. The name Abel Hebel means vanity or meaninglessness. It's the same word Solomon used in Ecclesiastes at least 38 times. Why Adam and Eve choose that name for their second son is a mystery. Perhaps life had been meaningless for them in the cruel world, especially when they recall the delights they, they had spent in Eden. But Abel's life and death were not meaningless or a tragic waste, for Abel is associated with the Lord Jesus Christ, as believers, we have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Hebrews 12, verse 14. While Abel's blood cried out from the ground for God to avenge his death, the blood of Jesus speaks from heaven of mercy and forgiveness. For his blood has obtained eternal redemption for all who believes on him. Hebrews 9 verse 12. Abel died as a martyr, but Jesus died as a victor and arose again to ascend to glory. Paul's great desire was that Christ be exalted in his body, whether by life or by death. Philippians 1 verse 20. And it was Paul who gave us 1 Corinthians 15, that great resurrection chapter, which climax with this marvelous assurance. And therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Utterly meaningless Everything is meaningless, scoffed King Solomon at the opening of Ecclesiastes. Life is Hebel from start to finish. Not so, said Paul, your labor, laborer in the Lord is not in vain. Christ has been resurrected and glorified. Abel has been vindicated. So, It would be good if you would read those scriptures, and if you have didn't have time to write it down, then just listen back. Wow, my friends. Christ our Lord is the resurrected Christ. In him, we have eternal life. 
here again was an example of a very important person in biblical history the life a short version and really meaningless is called that he was a witness he died by his brother and it's a witness to our lives whereas Paul says therefore my dear brothers and sisters stand firm let nothing move you always give yourself full to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain Christ has been resurrected and glorified and so we are in Christ the old is passed away and we are a new creation so enjoy that life even it's not always easy to be living it being a Christian doesn't mean that everything is solved that we walking a smooth path that's the wrong idea that some Christians have as long as we are here on her on earth we will walk through suffering persecutions and name it but our life is in Christ don't forget that blessings dear friends and have a wonderful day this is your pastor Yeti bye bye